Let's talk about how startups can cross the chasm. What chasm am I talking about? I'm talking about the chasm that exists between the early market for products and the mainstream market. Remember that the early market is comprised of innovators and early adopters, and the mainstream market, where most of our profit is, where most of the customers are, are those early majority, late majority, and even the laggards, as far as technology adoption goes. The needs and desires of the people that are in the early market can differ substantially from those in the mainstream market. So it's important for startups to be able to recognize this difference and to be able to find ways that they can make sure that they can cross over this chasm when they get to it. It's not the first to market, but the first to cross the chasm who wins. There's numerous examples of this, but I'll give you a very simple one. The Pebble smartwatch was one of the first smartwatches to be in the market that really functioned as a smartwatch, but is one that you don't hear about today, mainly because they're not in business anymore. That company that was the first to market, while they didn't succeed in the long run, it was the first to cross that chasm, the first to offer a smartwatch that appealed to the mainstream market, namely those from Apple and Samsung. So many startups never cross the chasm regardless of the adoption of the technology that they've invented or proposed. Now why is this? I'm going to present some ideas today about how you'd cross this chasm from a book called The All-In Startup by Diana Kander. And I think it offers a realistic uh, assessment of why startups fail and some key ideas for how startups can succeed. According to Diana, Startups work something like this. It starts out with a great idea. An entrepreneur has an idea for their product. They know it's going to be great. Uh, and they, all the different ways that people are going to use it starts turning around their head. And uh, they know that it's going to be this wonderful idea. They then go out and build it. So the entrepreneur actually uh, turns toward building the idea, toward toward making sure that this product works and that it's a perfect product before it's actually released out into the market. Then they brand it. They get a website, they get a logo, they get uh, all the marketing materials together, they get it all ready to go, ready to launch, to finally maybe approach a customer. And then they approach the customer and when they do, they often strike out big time. So finding that the customer really didn't want uh, what they were offering to them. The entrepreneur then goes back and repeats the steps one through four over and over again, uh, spending lots of time and lots of money without making any real progress. She calls this the startup loop of despair, and I think it's an interesting way to think about things. I have to admit I've fallen into this trap as well. I had an idea for a side business. Uh, I thought it was a great idea. We spent a lot of money building out the service that we were going to offer, making sure we uh, were able to offer it and uh, had the capabilities on hand. We branded it, made a nice website. I think we even ordered shirts. Uh, and then we went out to our customers and we found they weren't really interested. So uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out. It was a relatively low cost mistake. But some of these mistakes can be very high cost, not only in terms of money, but also time and emotional effort. So Diana says that innovations are about finding customers, not building products. No entrepreneur fails because they couldn't build their product. They fail because no one wanted to buy what they built. So she suggests that this is a much better approach. So you come up with an idea first and then you go to the customer. So find out if this idea is really what the customer wants. If it is, then you can go ahead and build your product or service and brand it afterwards. You might be wondering, how do you know if your customers will buy your product or service? Well, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. You can interview potential customers, and there is a specific way that you would want to do this. And I would reference back to her book, All in Startup Again, if you want uh, tips on how to do this. You might be wondering, well, why is there a methodology to this? Well, think about it. If you ask um, a friend, if you ask your relatives, or even if you ask a perfect stranger, um, hey, here's an idea I came up with. What do you think of it? 
Well, it's obvious that you want them to think it's great, right? So they are not going to provide the most honest of feedback. It's not that they're trying to be dishonest. They're just trying to make you feel good. And so there is a way that we need to kind of approach asking these questions. Um, you can also experiment on your customers. So for example, you can put up a website and take pre-orders for something. You can um, see if they'll sign up for a service. I know of some people that do public speaking and they come up with what they think is a great idea for a speech or for a, a workshop or seminar to give and to sell to corporate uh, entities. And what they'll do is they'll make the brochure first and then see how many people sign up. And if they sign up, then they'll go ahead and do all the lesson planning and figure out the workshop. I think that's kind of a brilliant idea. You go to the customers, find out what they want first. So there's lots of different ways to experiment uh, and the likelihood of failing goes down with the number of experiments that are done. So in fact, some business incubators are forcing their, what do we call it, incubees or the uh, startups that are located there to actually run some of these experiments to actually get talking to customers. So I hope that provides you with a little bit of information on how you can cross the chasm. There's other books on this topic as well. Jeffrey Moore has one called uh, Crossing the Chasm. I'll put a link to both that book as well as all in startup in the notes to this video.